So next up we have uh, Gary and Coral, who are going to uh, talk about uh, containers, uh, data plane networking journey in containers. So uh, take it away. You guys can, uh, mine is working. Um, hey everybody, uh, my name is Gary Lucknan. This is my colleague Coral Ramakrishnan. Uh, we are both uh, network software engineers with Intel and we're both members of the container network orchestration team. And so the, the purpose of today's presentation is just to make you aware of uh, some of the work we've been doing to deliver DPDK functionality into uh, Linux containers. Uh, so this is an overview of what we're going to cover. So we're going to start with a, a kind of high level overview of our various deployment models. Uh, and then we're going to take two of those deployment models, uh, the first one being bare metal and the second one being our unified infrastructure. And we're going to look at those in a little bit more detail uh, and, and discuss the, the DPDK work that we did there. Um, okay, so this is uh, just our deployment models are, are basically, it's, it's, this is our view on the world. Uh, so if I start with the top uh, pane here, the top left, the VNFs, um, I expect most people here know what a VNF is, uh, but for anyone that doesn't, a VNF is a, a virtual network function. Uh, and that's basically a piece of uh, networking software that would do the, the job traditionally done by, um, by a dedicated piece of hardware. So if you take some examples here, we have vFirewall, uh, vRouter, vNash, that kind of thing. And the reason we're mentioning VNFs is because uh, VNFs are, are seen as being ideally suited for, for containers, or, or other, the other way around, containers are ideally suited for VNFs. Uh, containers have a very light uh, resource footprint. Uh, they can be spun up and down really, really quickly. Um, all that kind of high availability, elasticity, um, they, so containers are really starting to be seen as the ideal home for VNFs. Uh, on the next uh, pane down, the NFVI network. Uh, your NFVI is your, your uh, infrastructure that you need to run your VNFs. And in this case, the, the networking side of that, we're using projects such as OVS, FDIO, DPDK, SRIOV, um, that kind of thing. Uh, so on your orchestration side then, uh, on the top right, uh, your orchestration engines uh, such as ONAP and MANO, they're doing your orchestration. Uh, next layer down you have Kubernetes and OpenStack, uh, that's like your, virt your virtualization layer or your Vim layer as it's known. And next layer down is your Open Daylight and OVN doing your, your network orchestration type of stuff. Uh, so the big pane here on the bottom, these are uh, the various deployment models as, as, as we see it. Uh, the one on the very far left here, that's, um, that's just a traditional VM uh, running on a, a piece of physical hardware. Uh, our team isn't really focused in this area, we're, we're focused on the other three, but it's in there just for comparison and because uh, VMs are, are traditionally where you'd run a, a VNF. Uh, so moving on to the other ones, so container bare metal. Uh, this is just a container running on a standard Linux box, um, nothing out of the ordinary. Uh, and the two on the right here, hybrid and unified, uh, these two are, uh, they're really about coexistence between containers and virtual machines. Um, so if you take a look at the hybrid one here, you can see that the container and uh, the VM, uh, they're sharing a network, but when it comes to compute and storage resources, uh, they have their own individual resources, whereas the unified, uh, it shares all three, uh, compute, network, and storage. So to put that simply, uh, a hybrid model is running a container beside a VM uh, and sharing a network, whereas the unified infrastructure is running a container within a VM. Uh, and so for today's, um, today's presentation, we're just going to focus on the bare metal and the unified. That's the container within VM. Uh, so before we, we look at the work we've done, this slide is just showing, I guess, how we uh, how we tackle the problems, uh, our workflow. So we start off by identifying gaps. Um, there's some examples of gaps here. I'll go into those in more detail later. But uh, an, a, an example of a gap there would be that Kubernetes doesn't support uh, multiple network interfaces. Uh, so we identify that as a gap. Uh, we resolve and integrate it. Uh, that usually means uh, contributing to an open source project. Or in the case of uh, Multis, we, we actually created our own CNI plugin. And then we go ahead and we communicate it out. And uh, we communicate it in the form of a reference architecture or an RA. Uh, and that's basically a document uh, that describes your whole environment uh, or our recommended environment um, right from your hardware up to your various software uh, 
projects in the stack. Uh, at the moment, we have two of these. We have uh, one each for um, the bare metal and the unified infrastructure. Uh, and just to mention as well, we're also working on some experience kits. Um, and experience kit is uh, an environment that we're running in our lab um, based on these RAs. So there'll be a, an experience kit per RA. Um, and the purpose of those is so that our customers can, uh, can log in and test on these RAs, uh, test their own software, uh, performance testing, that kind of thing. OK, so moving on to what we did here in, in, in bare metal. Uh, so this slide is just showing some of the, um, the challenges or the, the gaps that we had. And on the right, we have the various software projects that we used uh, to, to fix those. Uh, so we start off with uh, multiple network interface or multiple network interfaces for VNFs. Uh, as I mentioned before, uh, Kubernetes doesn't support multiple network interfaces. Uh, anyone that uh, is familiar with VNFs they'll know that at the very, very minimum, you're going to need two interfaces. That's your, your management and your data plane. Um, so we went ahead and we developed the multi-CNI plugin. Actually, Corral is the developer behind that, and we, uh, we, we published that. Uh, there was no support for high performance data plane. Uh, so for the north-south, uh, we introduced SRIOV and DPDK. And for the east-west, we introduced vhost user and DPDK. Um, there was no ability to allocate uh, platform or to request or allocate platform capabilities. Uh, here we introduced node feature discovery. Uh, there was no support for CPU core pinning. Uh, we started working with people in our team working with CPU manager for Kubernetes. Uh, and there was no dynamic huge page allocation. Uh, again, we have people on the team uh, working uh, to introduce native huge, huge page support for Kubernetes. So there was lots of different challenges, but um, for today's presentation, we're going to focus on the, uh, the two solutions that involved DPDK. And um, I also want to reiterate that we can see that the, most of the audience will be the VM-based audience. So yeah, the presentation is not about VM versus containers. It depends upon the customer use cases. If the customer use cases want the strong isolation between the VNF application, they can go for the VM-based uh, solution. And if the customer want the VNF application based upon the elasticity and the scalability, then they can go for the container-based application. Yeah. Um, so this is a slide just showing how uh, your network management, it's a high level view of how your network management works with containers. So up at the top, you have your container uh, network orchest or orchestration engines. Um, they're the guys controlling, controlling the whole scene. Uh, next level down, you have your container runtime. These are, this is the software that's actually spinning up your containers. Uh, the next level down here in different color, you have the CNI, or the container network interface. Uh, CNI is a specification. Um, it, it, it defines a, an API and a plugin framework um, for your various, at the bottom layer here, your container network plugins. Um, so CNI allows you to, uh, once your plugins conform to the CNI specification, you can plug in various, um, essentially you can plug in various uh, different container plugins into your container runtime. So I'm just going to populate this uh, with, uh, with some examples of open source projects. So again, up on, up on the top for your uh, orchestration or your management, uh, you have the likes of Kubernetes and Mesos. We have a red square there on Kubernetes. Kubernetes is the one that we are, we are uh, recommending in our reference architecture. Uh, on the next layer down, you have the likes of Docker, Rocket, and Hyper. These are your actual runtimes. Um, so Kubernetes, for example, could, could, could orchestrate any of these three. Uh, can orchestrate Docker, Rocket, or Hyper. Uh, again, uh, you have your container network interface. And here are some examples then of the, the CNI plugins that are out there. There's our own one, Multis, uh, Courier, Calico, Flannel. OK, so this is uh, basically what we did. It's, uh, it's, uh, the problem statement is there's a lack of support for physical uh, platform resources or for physical platform resource isolation. Uh, you have no guaranteed uh, network I.O. performance, and there's no support for data plane networking. And so the solution there was to develop a uh, DPDK SRIOV CNI plugin. Um, so uh, we have the, the reference here to where it's available on GitHub. But the way it works is um, the, the plugin has two operation modes. So it has a, a kernel mode, 
where the, the virtual function, your SROIOV virtual function, uh, is just bound to the container namespace and made available to a VNF application. Um, we also have a, a, a DPDK mode where it could be bound to any of these drivers here, a DPDK driver, uh, and then it's made available to a DPDK VNF application within the container. Um, so the, the previous slide there, there, or the previous solution that, uh, that gave us uh, a performance benefit for north-south traffic, uh, however, there's nothing yet for east-west traffic. Uh, and to deal with that, we, uh, we introduced a software accelerated switch, and we developed a, uh, a vhost user CNI plugin, and uh, that was actually developed in collaboration with ourselves and the Intel DPDK team. Um, and so that, that plugin uh, has the ability to uh, work with a, an OVS switch or uh, an FDIO VPP switch. Again, uh, we have a link there to where it's available on GitHub. Okay, so now just moving on to the, the work done in the unified or container within VM space. Um, so again, I'm uh, showing uh, problem statements and um, software projects that we, that we use to, to solve those. Um, so the first one was that there was uh, performance penalties for running containers within virtual machines. Um, and so to solve that, we, 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 uh, we used a project called Courier. Uh, Courier is an, is an open source project, or an open stack project, um, and it allows, you to, it allows your Linux containers to join your open stack Neutron network. Uh, so we, we uh, contributed to and extended the functionality of Courier, uh, and we allowed it to, to, uh, to deliver this same networking to the nested container, the container within the VM. Uh, uh, scaling data plane networking, uh, we use something called uh, the master VM, more on that in a minute, and DPDK. Uh, multiple network interfaces weren't available. Again, we used, uh, we developed the multi-CNI plugin. Uh, and again, there was no support for CPU core pinning. And again, we're, we are working with CPU core manager for Kubernetes there. Uh, and again, there's, there's lots of different challenges, but today I'm just going to concentrate on the, the solution that involved DPDK. Uh, so this, this slide is, is describing the master VM. Um, so the, the master VM is a term that we first heard, actually, it came from, from Ray Kensela at Intel. Uh, Ray is doing some work with, around the F, FDIO uh, area. And uh, so Ray showed us this architecture. It's a container within a VM. And um, we've seen this, and we said this, this aligns really, really closely with our, our unified infrastructure. In fact, all we needed to do really was introduce uh, courier down the bottom here to, to handle the network orchestration. Uh, and so th there's, there's many uses, use cases for the unified infrastructure, but in the case here with, with the, uh, the master VM, uh, the objective was to run 1,000 containers within a virtual machine, uh, and, and we reckon that will benefit the data plane performance. Uh, so the use case there for benefiting it was the elasticity, uh, and scalability. So with your, with your VNS running on containers rather than VMs, um, they can be spun up and down on demand really, really rapidly. Um, so, the, um, so the solution to doing that then was we needed to deliver uh, DPDK functionality into the nested container. And to do that, we again contributed to, or we're in the process of contributing to the, the courier project um, we have a proof of concept uh, plugin working for Courier. Um, we have communicated it. If you see on the reference down here, we, we've, we've uh, uploaded a blueprint to Courier, uh, and the, the Courier community are, are all on board. It aligns very well with what, what they want. Um, so the difference between the, the unified solution and the bare metal, rather than uh, a virtual function uh, on physical hardware, we now have uh, a VertIO port uh, on a VM, uh, and that's being uh, bound to the DPDK driver and inserted into the na uh, container namespace. So your, your VertIO um, port there is being, is being provided by Neutron, and Neutron is up inside, or excuse me, uh, Courier is up inside the VM uh, doing all the various binding. Um, so that's it, that's the story so far. Um, if you have any questions. I think we
we don't have any questions <laughs> yeah we have hi so what's the performance inside vm to have, have the container there the uh, the performance is not related to the throughput or the the uh, latency the performance is related to the scalability if you have a vnf application inside the a VM. It's difficult to have a control based upon the VNF application. Suppose you can have a single VNF application or you can have a two VNF application. But if you have this uh, uh, Kubernetes-based, uh, VM-based solution where you have a nested containers, then you can decompose your uh, VNF application into multiple microservices and you have the, you, the control on the scalability and scaling down. But if you have a VNF, uh, VNF application which is in the VM, which is controlled by the OpenStack, you have the control only on the VM, but not on the VNF application. So this one gives you the granularity of control of the VNF applications because of the nested containers. And the second advantage is like um, the VM will be bounded to a particular core. And uh, if you want your VNF applications to be two VNF application or three VNF application to be bounded to a two different cores, it's not possible in current uh, VM-based solution. And uh, there is no way in OpenStack you could able to orchestrate that one. But if it's our solution, the VM is uh, maintained by the OpenStack, and the VNF application is controlled by the Kubernetes. So the Kubernetes will have more control on how much code it has to use and how much huge pages you have to queue, and also the memory utilization. So it's depending upon the elasticity and also the customer use case. It's not more on the performance, actually. OK, thanks. Hi. Um, this looks really cool for a lot of uh, really high performance apps, but I'm wondering if, you know, Intel, th for Intel cores are free, but for the rest of us, they're expensive, and having multiple things pulling on multiple things, chewing CPU, um, you may not have a lot left for the container. So, in, t in terms of what you think it's uh, expensive, like, with well, you've got to have one CPU core dedicated to pulling okay. the, this. The, the NIC and another one dedicated to pulling the vhost, another one dedicated to pulling on the other side on the container, and you know okay. you can easily get you can easily waste eight cores just to move data into one container. You know it uh, depends upon the use case. Uh, that's what I could say. Like if you have a VNF application that video encoding or audio encoding, we have yeah. some customers who is currently using it in the field trial. Yeah. So for them, the real uh, importance is the performance. Right. It's not the core. So right. we are happy to sell so much CPUs yeah. for them. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, uh, hello, I have a question. Uh, are there uh, any performance difference between like uh, application with DBK on bare metal compared to application in container? Yeah. With I yeah. IR the, con the container-based solution is based upon uh, width pair. So the comparison, you can't compare your width pair with uh, DPK-based or SRV-based solution. But you can compare the performance between your uh, SRV-based uh, um, interface and your DPK SRV-based interface. we getting our own like 38 times of more performance. So the comparison between the whatever CNA plugins we have shown, Fanel, Calico, or whatever CNA plugins, whichever are used in the uh, Kubernetes or cloud native, the cloud meeting in sense that they are very lightweight, they use only the width pair. So the performance, you can compare the Kubernetes uh, interfaces, native interfaces with the DPDK, actually. So the, the, I mean, the performance is quite similar in Maximum. It's uh, definitely maximum in DPDK and SRV based solutions, what we are. So providing. you use the Calico, no Flano? The Calico basically use, basically for the, if you want to run your, um, control-based application for Nginx or something. But uh, if you want to run a data plane-based VNF application, that I don't think Calico could be performance enough because all the Calico fanal are based upon slow overlay networking. They are just with pair interfaces. So they are connected to the Linux bridge directly. So I don't think they have much more performance as we expected for a VNF-based application. They could act as a management plane or control plane, but not as a data plane. Okay, understand. Thank you. And I want to ask here. 
I want to ask about the difference between the master VM approach and the containers or bare metal. Like, what is the advantages of using master VM? The advantage, I could say, that what I uh, said previously, depending upon the scalability of the VNF application. So in our case, uh, the OpenStack, which maintains a OVS switch, so we don't need to maintain a OVS switch on the same way we are maintaining the vhost uh, use the CNI plugin. So the things are already there. We are trying to use how to use these things much beneficially for the VNF-based application inside the VM. So you can normally run your VNF application in your VM, but uh, did, did it, that give you enough control of those VNF applications? That's a real question for the VM-based, uh, OpenStack-based uh, VNF deployment model. So in our case, it gives a lot of uh, flexibility. Suppose you can make a requirement to the courier Kubernetes, and the courier Kubernetes can give you multiple width pair, and you can connect these width pair to multiple VNF application. So in case of VM, it's just uh, one-to-one -one mapping, you make a request. No, I'm not comparing to VM, I'm comparing to containers on bare metal. So, no, oh, okay, so comparing to the bare metal, the one advantage is like the environment is provided by the OpenStack, so you don't need to create your own environment, but in this case, you have to maintain your own OVS switch and you have to maintain the core and the performance, you have to maintain on it your, your own. Yeah. Just a clarification. So uh, this seems to be solving uh, some of the networking issues in, in Kubernetes. Yeah. Uh, what about QProxy? So uh, is it a solution also for that, or, or can, yeah. it, can it be? Yeah, I can explain you a little bit about that. So the multiple uh, interfaces which we're providing is we're providing through the CNI plugins. So what we are returning back is just one interface back to the Kubernetes. So Kubernetes maintain only one interface. So the rest of the interfaces will be maintained by the private network. For example, if you have a VNF application, the Kubernetes could act as a management plane, and you have a private network in which you have your own protocol, so you can control that own protocol using SRV as an interface for the VNF-based application. But there is a proposal which Intel started in uh, Kubernetes networking community to make this multiple interface support as a native support in Kubernetes itself. This discussion has been going for around 18 months in Kubernetes community. It's going very slow as we expected because there was a lot of discussion pushback from the community saying that Kubernetes is a cloud native and you guys putting so much thing from OpenStack to Kubernetes, we want it very light. But what we are saying is it's also light approach. The only change you have to make is like Kubernetes to support multiple IP address and multiple interface. Once you achieve this, later we can go to the Q proxy, which is a different domain. Suppose if you use SRV, it's normally going to break the Q proxy because the SRV is directly bounded to the network namespace and um, you have no idea what is the IP address you're giving to the SRV. The DPDK, it's a different <laughs> domain. Like uh, DPDK, for the DPDK, you have to look for some other use cases like Zookeeper or something to, which maintain its own MAC address or port uh, addresses. I'm back here. Um, I, maybe I missed that or I'm just a little bit confused, but uh, to define different network configurations, MAC VLAN, IP VLAN, and, and which part will uh, uh, enforce this? That's the DPK OVS part or? Um, um, you can uh, enforce the IP VLAN using DPDK as well, and uh, there are few supports for L2 forwarding uh, in a few of the plugins. For fa for example, Fanel is the only plugin which provides VXLAN support. The rest of the plugin don't support any of the tunneling mechanism, and uh, the one of the mechanism we are trying to uh, develop in the vhost user using uh, OVS uh, switches, uh, uh, GRE, and VXLAN tunneling. So by which we can able to do those tunneling mechanism. But currently, uh, only the FANEL is the only CNI plugin in Kubernetes uh, which provides a VNS, VXLAN tunneling. Rest of the inter plugins don't provide that much of tunneling mechanisms. That's one of the drawback, I could say, in Kubernetes. Yeah. So, so from the CNI, how do you... Um, through DPDK, how do you actually implement the mapping to the 
SRV um, virtual interfaces? How, how's that done? So as we exp shown in the diagram, if you go back to the diagram, back. No, it's not going okay. So, so, so you have DPDK running inside the CNI? Uh, so the DPDK application is running inside the container. So the chicken and egg. I mean, how do you actually get um, the PCI address or those? Well, not that. The configuration from the CNI into DPDK. How do you get? Okay. So in CNI, we have something called config files. So in the config files, you will define which interface you have to bind. For example, the SRIV will say the keyword like master. So the master is the interface in which you can specify your, the Intel NICs or Mellanox NICs. Those uh, interface names you have to specify. Mm -hmm. And then the CNA plugin itself will do the self v, uh, VF management and the bandwidth allocations for those interfaces depending upon your input in the config file. But it must program the NIC, it must program the classifier in the NIC, right? Sorry? It must pro program the classification in the NIC. It must... It's classification? For what packets go into the SRV? No, th those things are not done. So it, do it just provides you the wiring. It don't provide you the classification of which package should be done. So then, so then the application has to learn that information and then enforce it through DPDK? Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Thank you. Gary. And Thank you, guys.